Man, G, what's happening, baby? Two drinks, bro. What's going on with Nico? Two drinks, man. What's on your mind, bro? It's Tanya Alicia, man. She been tripping, man. She been coming in all hours of the night, spending up all kinds of money. She ain't been calling me, texting me back like she's supposed to, man. On what's going on, man? Hey, man, I'm your friend, right? Yeah. Be honest with you, girl, a little messy, bro. I've been seeing her out in these streets, hanging out a little bit in the club. Even caught her coming out of hotel room the other night, man. She doing her thing out here in these streets. Man, why you ain't tell me? Man, how you tell your friend that? Man, you. Your girl oh, being messy, man. your girl doing her thing. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. It's getting a little expensive. I mean, uh, y'all should work it out. Um, cause y'all good together. What you mean expensive, Chris? What you talking about, man? Relax, man. She messy, bro. She called. I say, Chris, you wanna talk it out? You wanna work it out? I say, yeah, I think y'all can work it out. We started talking, it's that. We started drinking. Next thing you know, left turn to right, and we end up naked. So I smashed a couple times. But uh, it was for the good of the friendship, bro. You wouldn't want her to be out here with some stranger, but now she out here with some of everybody. Now she messy, bro. She messy. I don't know. She cheating on us. That's the major thing. She cheating on us. And what are we going to do about it, bro? <laughs> I'm glad you're glad. I didn't know how you're gonna take it. I'm glad you're glad about this, man. You know what's funny, man? Yeah, what's up, bro? I kind of got something to tell you too. Oh yeah. Yeah. What's good? Your girl Judy. With the Judy with the Judy. big booty. Yeah, yeah. My people, yeah. What's good, Your girl? She kind of messy too. Judy messy, yo. Yeah, Judy messy too. You know this part I like to go to get the, the good drinks, man. Right. She was in there. You know, it turns out she talking trash about you. I'm talking about Tanya Alicia, man, and up went the down and. Yeah, I slid Judy. You slid Judy? A couple times. Oh. But look, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know y'all was like that. I, I, you know, but you my dog. I mean, we boys, man. You know, let's, let's leave them alone. It, you know, I got your back. Oh, friends, right? Your friends. My brother's boys keeper. Boys and My brother's keeper. <laughs> my man. <laughs> Father, he's still alive. I watched my father die. Boys running the whole city, man. Don't lose your mind. You about this? I'm afraid not. All right, all right, all right. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, before I bring in uh, my co-host and our guest, I just wanted to go ahead and uh, give love and shout outs to my family. I'm up here in Monticello with the Wilson family. And we just wanna uh, take a moment to give honor and shout out to my father-in-law, the late Mr. Jimmy G. Wilson, uh, the maestro. He was a band director up here for, I think about 40 years. Uh, so he touched a lot of lives. Not only did he touch his friends and family's lives, uh, you know, his daughter, his children, uh, his wife, of course, but so young men and women that came through that program. So giving him his uh, his love right now. Uh, so I just wanted to go ahead and do that to everybody that showed, uh, that called, that posted, that text. Thank you very much. We appreciate all the love. So without any further ado, let's bring in my man, Tight Mike. What's going on, brother? Hey, my man. One time for the maestro. You didn't say what school? Uh, Jefferson County High School. There you it's go. There you go. <laughs> if you if you know anything about uh you know the Monticello Tallahassee area, you know it's Jefferson County High School, and uh, he was the band director for many years. So great, hey, great, man. great man. Salute to Mr. Wilson. Um, I've seen that band a few times back in the day, and now to know that he was the maestro gives my heart joy. Um, Absolutely. To know that I'm uh, linked not directly but indirectly. So uh, right. definitely shout out to uh, Mr. Wilson. So we're gonna ride out today for the maestro. <laughs> right, that's and, right. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, we're going to bring in our special guest. If you saw those clips, uh, if you're just joining us, you missed those clips, man. Uh, edited by our personal skit. That's um, uh, I'll get into the story when we bring them on. But he edited our skit and made it look beautiful and professional. Like we went to Hollywood Studios to get it done. And then, of course, the trailer uh, for his latest film that you can see now on Amazon Prime and YouTube. And we're talking about none other than. Carlos, the filmmaker Smith, coming in, joining us. What's going on, brother? Hey, what's up? What's up, fellas? What's going on? Oh, nothing much, man. Nothing much, man. Thank you for having us, man. 
I mean, thank you for yeah. joining us. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I mean, that's my line. Thank you for having me. It's all good. But thank, but thank you guys, bro. Hey, my dog a little off, man. You got you got to give him a little something. Carlos, what kind of light you got? You got all kind of lights going over there, green and red and purple. You know, you know, I'm a film editor, man. So I gotta keep, I, I keep like different types of lights in my room just to get into the vibes and stuff like that. So that that's pretty much me all the time. Hey, man, it was a pleasure having you. And I had to wear my shirt. I thought about you, uh, yeah, you on the on the on Afrotainment television on the uh, the late night talk show uh, that I co-host uh, the uh, the lowdown with James Young. He came on and did his thing, Essex. So he's oh, yeah. he's not only an editor and everything, now he's a TV star. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. That, that was a fun day. I, I enjoyed that time. I had a good time over there. Yeah. Good times, man. Hey, we're going to get right into it. Um, your film is taking the world by storm. It's not just national. It's now international. Uh, yeah. Luke and Lee is in the beginning of a series, I think you told me. It's a two- or three-part series. Yeah, pretty much. So um, right now, it, it's pretty much like a saga at the very moment. So we're, uh, Luke Lee is technically a four film, um, and we're currently getting ready for part five and part six, which will be tied into one one storyline, basically. I got you. And your film's already won awards. Tell the, the independent film directors out there, man, kind of the process that you went through and what you go through on a, on a daily basis and what got you to this point. Clearly, uh, your career is skyrocketing now. You did something different um, just to help the youngsters. Our, our show is all about helping and laughing, of course. Uh, but tell oh, folks what you went through to get to where you are, because now you're an award-winning director and editor. For sure, for sure. And I'm, I do appreciate that a lot. Um, I, you know, honestly, man, it honestly really took a while to get to that, to that point. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been doing, I've been filming for 15 years as of this year. Yeah, 15 years, man. So um when i did my first movie back in 2013 my biggest goal was to at least hit a film festival or two but once i got to that point when i felt like i was ready for that time that's when i started just applying to festivals and then when the last film made one and then i felt like all right i know where to go from there but the whole process is really just pushing your film to festivals as much as possible to because there's a lot of them out there and um you know even the, uh the film freeway website that i go to um, i'm sure a lot of people know about that um i, I pretty much just kind of submitted to as many as possible i mean at least the good ones of course and you know kind of see where it goes from there and uh fortunately and um right now i got three selections so far uh won about four or five awards already so um and the film just came out in january so it's a blessing man it's really it's a really big deal to me you know what i mean so uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go back a, a little bit further than that, man. When did you know you wanted to be a filmmaker? What What was the genesis of you taking this path? To be honest with you, I, it was a simple story for me. I mean, really just watching movies, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of like um, just seeing how they put it together, just the whole experience of just seeing what I was witnessing. And that was just something I loved so much. That's something I was willing to try back in high school. And it pretty much kicked off from there after my 18th birthday when I uh, bought my camera. Yeah, I bought my camera on my 18th birthday, started filming from there, and I already loved it from that point. That's awesome, hey, man. man. That, that, okay. That's great. We want to um, – I got. I would be remiss if I didn't do this. And we go back and forth with the question. So we're going to both be in you, Carlos. Thanks, um, fair deal. I'm with you. Your hometown, man. We have to shout out uh, your hometown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 the new ball. That's Jacksonville, Florida for you guys that are watching from out of state. Um, yes, that is world renowned. Uh, man, something good coming out of Jacksonville. Carlos is something good coming out of Jacksonville. Um, definitely. Um, now I'm gonna um, not pivot from the conversation, but just I know you like movies when you're home relaxing. I'm the Essex is the technical guy. I'm the guy that's going to get in your feelings. <laughs> when you're home right. relaxing, and I know you're an editor and you're busy, man, you're doing a lot of films. What do you watch? What entertains you when you just kind of want to woo or whatever? What do you watch? I'm more of an action person when it comes to films in general. I'm more of an action person. I love like the film sagas, like the Fast fast Saga. I love uh, the biopics, like Straight Outta Compton. Um, you know, I'm more, I'm more of a biopic person, action film type of guy. That's where I kind of stick to. That's my go-to. Um, I do have some dramas here and there as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much why, why I stick with. Yeah. And have you always, uh, cause you also write people, it's important to know that you actually, you write these films as well. 
Uh, was yes, that sir. something that you started doing from day one too, or did you take any uh, writing classes or anything, or did you just basically come off the dome and, and start creating? Um, top of the dome on my end. Um, yeah, pretty much the same time I started filming, that's when I started with the writing too. Mm, I got you, man. Now, um, at Afrotainment, I work for TV, but I've been a stand-up the majority of my career, and then I just got into TV. Um, were you always in the film? Did you do something else and say, you know, film is my passion? I know you said you bought a camera at 18, but were you around television sets or movie sets? Like, what really kind of pushed you into this this lane? Um, to be honest with you, I don't think the thing is, I have never really been to like, uh, which is probably going to be surprising to a lot of people, but I, I don't think I've really been to like a major movie set. I don't think I ever have uh, in, uh, on my side. So, um, I think just kind of doing my research is what really did it, honestly. Just just mm -hmm. seeing um, directors that I follow, um, even cinematographers and videographers that I follow that kind of like came up on their own as well. So just kind of seeing that really inspired me to do my own thing with it and, and see how far uh, film filmmakers can really go with it. Yeah. Did you... Um, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So with these action movies, because uh, I've seen the movie. If you guys haven't seen it, y'all need to go ahead and see the movie. Uh, with the action movies, you got a lot of fight scenes. You got gunplay in there. What was that like with putting that together? Because people don't understand it's totally different when you're doing it independently versus, right. you know, when you got big studios behind you, you're hiring stunt people and, you, you know, special effects and all that stuff. What was the process of you uh, creating some of these great fight scenes and, and action sequences that you have? Oh yeah, definitely. So um, we'll we'll go with Luca Lee because you know what that's the related yeah. film. But um, what the good thing about that project that the the people that's the main characters they know how to fight, like they know how to do all that good stuff. So right. you know, I kind of let them handle that part. The only thing I really handle is the story department. Okay. Um, so it, but what I what they also do, they do take some time to rehearse the scenes. Um, sometimes we do some on the spot. Um, but most times I have them like, hey, y'all meet up or whatever. Y'all kind of figure out what you want to do. And I, ever since the very first solo movie, I always let them handle the, the fight choreography. Um, just because that's just something that's just not my expertise. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. you know, you got to delegate when you can. You know what I'm saying? So um, but the, and, but that in the gun, the gun, the gun scenes and whatnot, um, it's kind of same thing, same ordeal. You know, people the experience the experiences that they have really helps you know what i'm saying so it's kind of right at home for them and i'm pretty much just putting the visual part of it together okay. i got you now my my main man there of course he's a, um he's an actor but i'm a stand-up oh, man how, how do you go about picking these guys like you got you got an action-packed film bro did you know you needed five guys that knew how to fight are you picking uh people that you kind of know are you are you picking independent guys like yourself or do you go through a pool? how would one get into a movie with Carlos? I do, I, I always do it the fair way. Like, you know, I just do a casting call, you know? Okay. Um, give everybody a chance and an opportunity because um, I'm never one of those people that just like, hey, I'm gonna pick you to be in the film. Like anyone that's ever been in my film, I had to audition at some point. So yeah. um, even with that being said, um, there, are, there are a few instances where I do write some roles and I think of a person that could possibly play this role and I still reach out to them like, hey, I got something that you could possibly do. And you know, you think you want to try auditioning this. Sometimes I do run into those instances as well. But for the most part, I just do a casting call. Um, even now that this is a film series, you know, I didn't have to do, you know, we already got our main characters established at this point. So, yeah. you know, but that's pretty much been it for me. Um, you know, fortunately, uh, fortunately kind of grew to the point. I mean, there was something that it was just some skills that the thing is, I ended up writing more to the action side because of what they can do. I want to utilize their skills in the film as well. Smart, smart. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So I wanted to uh, first go ahead and tell the story. So I pretty much came across you through social media. I don't know how, it's probably one of them things where we had mutual friends and we connected somehow, some way. But right. I noticed when people are very dedicated to their craft and they're very genuine. And me and Ty, you know, we wanted to do some skits, but we knew we needed some some help. And I had taken notice of you and saw that some of the things that you were doing. And then I also saw that you were promoting 
the fact that you edit as well. And uh, right. I, I took it like to you. I reached out to you that day, and all we had was you know just this raw footage that you know we right. know we needed. We knew we had something good, but we needed something to put it together. And it was just as faith would have it. Uh, I saw your post about editing, and hit you up, and you did a magnificent job. You guys, uh, you guys can see that on our websites all the time. So. With with filmmaking and as an actor, we all we all know that sometimes you gotta have you gotta wear different hats, you know, either right. to different hats to pay your bills, different hats to be in filmmaking and things like that. So, uh, the, the is the editing side something that you want to continue to do uh, for others as well, or kind of branch out into maybe some of the larger studios and do editing, or is not as it now just to focus on making your own films and and doing that as well. Um, I'm, I'm balancing between both, actually. You know, okay. I really am. So, um, cause this is actually what I do for a living now. You know what I mean? So, okay. Perfect. Um, so, Perfect. yeah. So, so, I mean, any project that, you know, I feel that I could be a part of or can bring something to the table with, then I'm all, I'm all in for it. You know what I mean? So, um, at the end, at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, like this is something I love doing and I had to really go for it. So, but yeah, definitely, you know, at the end of the day, that's why I would stick with. All right, we got our first question here from J-Dub. Shout out to J-Dub, thanks for joining us. He says, do yeah. people who attend your casting calls need prior acting experience? Not necessarily. And I say that because even when I did um, a few, it, most of the films I've done, we've had some first time actors on it and they did a great job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes I just see the potential in, potential in those guys or, or female. And um, some you you never know what they can do until they try, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm all I'm all up for it. Even when I do the casting calls, if you feel like if you feel like you know you, you can fit the role, go for it. You know what I'm saying? Give it a shot. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, Shout you out let to us know, man. If you got, on, hey, what's up, TJ? You let us know, hey. Carlos. Uh, we want to sneak in at least uh, segment two, the part two, the next one. <laughs> Me and Essex right. sneak us a little right or something. You know what I'm saying? Get us in there at it. Sneak it in there. Hey, right now, man. Um, I was planning on auditioning for his last one, but a project came up, uh, so I didn't have time to audition for it. But I definitely uh, want to work with this brother in some capacity, some way soon, as we, far as him directing me and, and possibly you, Tyke. Tyke, you got to go ahead and uh, you got to come on and get these uh, acting chops too. So I'm ready, definitely planning on looking ready. out for the next one. You been. You've been teasing about this next casting call for a while now. You got any breaking yeah. news you want to share with the acting um, funny family? You know um, what I'm I believe, I, I, believe I do have a date. <laughs> I believe I do have a casting call date. I ain't going to announce it yet, but I, it, it's definitely in June. It's going to be in June. Okay. But uh, right now I'm in the midst of uh, solidifying the locations to do the casting call. At. Once I get that settled, then I'll make that official announcement along with the roles available. It's plenty of roles available, too, because you it is a two-part so. You heard it here first, y'all. You heard it here first. That's what's up. <laughs> Wait, Great so you gonna try to, you gonna do in person? Yeah, yeah, you doing I, I think yeah, I think you know with everything's opening up now, I think people are more comfortable getting out um, to yeah. do so. So I mean, obviously, we'll still follow the guidelines as much as possible. But yeah. I, I definitely want to do it in person this time around for sure. Okay. Yeah, just and okay. I, I mean, if you keep it like if you give people like appointments time so that you don't have a whole you know waiting room of people in there sucking up air. It, that's probably be best. But I think a lot of actors are looking forward to that, man. Uh, some people, you know, I do uh, self table for people. Some people are not comfortable doing that as they are in person. And then there's also people that's vice versa. Uh, right. You know, most people being at home and taking their time and stuff like that. So uh, so that's good either way, man. So, you know, because as an actor, you know, that came up in Florida, we build our credentials and we build our resumes off of independent work. If it's not for independent work, uh, some of these actors that are the household names, they don't exist. So anytime I do independent work, you guys always see I support other people's projects, support my own. I always put that hashtag support independent projects, man, because that's where your right. next wave is coming from. So for this brother here, he's the next wave of filmmakers uh, that's coming out. So people got to support that, especially when he's doing different types of films that you're not seeing every day. You got to support that. People like myself tight mic that have been grinding and coming up through the ranks. These are the people that you got to support because that's the next wave that is coming behind you, man. So you guys that are watching, y'all make sure y'all getting this brother's uh, uh, social media. We'll get that at the end and, and, and support sure. the brother. 
I mean, Amazon Prime. Sure. As a matter of fact, you, they can go support on Amazon Prime, right, Carla? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got it. I got a Luke and Leo Amazon Prime right now. So um quick thing, that's like my first film that ever made it to that platform. So my excitement was off the roof when I when I saw that. So yeah, absolutely. And what are, what, are some of the, what are some of the awards that you took on from these festivals? I, tell us some of the awards oh. that you so two of the it's two of the festivals I got awards for. Um, so I got a award married on the on the Vegas on the Vegas festival, which um, I believe it was. Um, I want to say the best ensemble, best ensemble cast. Uh, so that was from Vegas, and then uh, from the one from Atlanta, the Farming Empire Productions Film Festival. Um, I had we picked up five awards on that one. So we got uh, best action picture, uh, best producer. I got second place on that. Uh, best hair and makeup. It was two more that I can't think off the top of my head right now because it, you know what I'm saying? It's too but many. It's too many. Uh, it's not hitting me right now. It's not straight. But it's, it's all right, it's, man. Uh, you, you're on another level right now, brother. Do you feel the energy? Do you feel the change in your career? Do you feel yourself turning a corner? I, I, I honestly do. I honestly do, man. Because, like, you know, this is the first time I've ever been getting any type of awards for my films. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That must be a great feeling, man, to all your hard work. And then now it's being rewarded. And now, you know, people like looking around like, oh, Carlos really like, it's real to them, even though it's been a 15 year grind for you. But now they're like, right. oh yeah, you got some new friends, Carlos, new cousins. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly, yes, 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 sir. All right, go ahead. And you know, another, another, another thing I want to commend you on before we transition into our, uh, our relationship stuff. Uh, you're very outspoken about uh, about things in your personal life that you've had to heal from and things that you've had to grow oh. from. Uh, and I'm not going to ask you to go into detail or anything like that, but just, um, you know, talk to the people about, you know, why you feel the need to speak out on things like that. Are you trying to, you know, bring awareness to uh, your mental health and self-care? Mm -hmm. uh, is it just, you're just an open book like that? You know, is there a message behind what you're doing? Because a lot of people, you know, especially my generation the older, you know, we were taught to hold everything in, but you're very, you're very outspoken. You're very transparent about things like that. Uh, so what, what, what leads you to, to do that? Are you trying to help people or is just, that's just how you roll? Um, for the most part, I've always been that way. Um, it is, it is one thing to, it's a message to myself and to everyone else that's like really not talking about it. You know, that's just kind of ignoring that side, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, it's, it's okay to understand that, you know, you're not always, you're not always in the right place mentally. And I try to make people aware of that because what I've, what I've learned from it personally, like you can't perform at your best if you don't take care of yourself. And that's just facts. So, you know, once I learned that and I try to stress that to people all the time that, you know what I'm saying? You want to be, you want to be able to be your best version of you. And it's, it's only going to work if you acknowledge when you, the things that you got to fix with yourself first. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I stand with that. That's what's that's, that's, that's great, man. A lot of people don't understand uh, that, and I commend you for that, brother. Uh, as a director and editor, and Essex, you as an actor, a lot of times, he's a stand-up. A lot of times, we're on the stage by ourselves. Are you in the editing room by yourself? Are you doing an acting scene by yourself? And you have to motivate yourself because it's you. You know what I'm saying? Nobody else can, can answer for you or relate for you, man. So I commend you on that and getting yourself together mentally. I definitely support that, brother. Because this, uh, this, this artist life is different, boy. <laughs> so, it really is. Man. It really People is. don't right. understand. Whether you're a comedian, an actor, or a director, you're putting your, I mean, you know, even if it's somebody else's work, but you're putting, you're putting your work, you're putting yourself yeah. on yeah. front street for people to judge, yeah. people to right. criticize, then the stuff that they don't see, the rejection, the bad deals, the, the people, you know, miss mistreating you and not appreciating you, it can take its toll. So I, that's why I wanted to bring that up because uh, we do have to do a lot of self-care and we do have to also find support from people mm -hmm. who are like-minded, who are kind of going through the same thing. So uh, mm -hmm. I commend you, you know, I, I, I you make me want to open up more. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's just putting the word out there, You need a hug sometimes, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey man, it's life yeah, the way we deal with it, man. Hey man, that's perfect. That pivots us right oh, into uh, our internet. relationship topic of the day. <laughs> Let's go. Um, Is the internet Steve cooperating? You got what's up? That's frozen. Wait, Ta I got something. You. There you go. Okay, I can hear you. 
Yeah, there you go. We're going to pivot into our relationship yeah. topic. Yeah, our relationship topic of the day. Steve Harvey had a comment that he made about having friends, uh, males and females having friends and being married uh, or being in a relationship, something committed. Uh, Carlos, in the workplace, I know you probably don't do that at all, but um, in your in your former years, all right, are you married now, brother? Nah, no, sir. Okay, good. Are you single? Are you dating? No. No, no not that either. Okay, well, we're going to get you hooked up, brother. Don't you worry about it. We got you tonight. <laughs> uh, the, the question was, it would be perfect for you because you're single like me. My man is married, so his answer may be different. Um, right. Can yeah. you be dating somebody and still have friends of the opposite sex? Is that still cool? Well, no, no. Well, actually, let me, let's me let clarify the question so uh, okay. we get, okay, on, we'll get off one track. But no, he was saying that men can't be friends with women, like, period. He was oh, saying no. he has no... You know, he says he has no female friends because basically what he's saying is the only friendships that men and women have are those that women have established that there's nothing that's ever going to happen. So, right. <laughs> I think he's kind of being funny about it, but people took it to heart and it went yeah, viral. Right. I saw like I saw so many videos on YouTube okay. of people talking about this, arguing about it, fussing at each other about it. So I figured we could just have a good time with it, man. So yeah, yeah. so yeah, Carlos, okay. can you be friends with women? Can you can yeah, you just be friends with women? I, can you be friends with women? I, I understand what you're saying. I think I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, I think go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Carlos. No, I, I honestly think so because I mean, look, if I'm in a relationship, I mean, I, I know where I don't need. I mean, we grown people. We we know what not to do. So, you know what I'm saying? We, we know boundaries. And, I mean, I mean, me personally, I, I, don't, I can't be tempted to cheat on somebody that I actually care about. That's just who I am. So I, in, my personal, in my personal experience, I feel like I, you know, I don't think it's a problem at all. You know what I'm saying? As long as there's a respect level to it, I don't think it's a problem. Okay. He's saying also, Carlos, just in general, can you just be friends with a chick in general without it being something else? Can you just be yeah. cool with a chick? Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I got, I got, few, I got quite a few of them that I'm friends with, that nothing has ever happened with. So, um, you know, I mean, just me, me personally, I, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, with everybody else, I don't know. I can't speak for everybody else, but me personally, I, um, yeah, you know. I have, I have, um, and I guess it's different. I'm with you, though. I can too, because it may have started like I wanted to get with them, and then I saw something in them, and I was like, no. Nah, Right. You're just going to be cool people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I, I'm bad about that, and I apologize. Um, ladies out there, I'm one of those guys. If I see on your resume, if I do my background check on you, and you got a couple busters on your record, <laughs> and, you, and, you, and you got a couple ducks on your record, like I'm like, man, because you are prone to make a bad decision. So that's an interesting caveat there, Ty. So basically, at first, you considered – smashing or dating uh romantically but you saw right. a, fl a red flag that made you be like ah nah we can just be cool we can be friends <laughs> tj right. tj said something tj said something similar on his comment uh that i thought was interesting and the thing is at first right who's the person that tends to friend zone first right it's usually women the woman right oh, well. Oh, to the women, because men are always thinking that okay, maybe I could smash, maybe maybe not, and then the friendship evolves after you kind of like ah, oh, that's all right, or she was like nah, I don't see you like that, right. you know what I mean? So I think that's the caveat. So you got to define friendship, right? Uh, right? Friends, like to me, friends are like people that got your phone number, your house, people that you know know you, somebody else that's your friend, you know y'all hang out and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I ain't I can't remember the last time a woman asked me to go watch UFC or <laughs> fight or something. Right. Hey, but, but I'm married, hey, like this is different when you marry. So as as hey, single wait, wait. guys, do women do y'all friends, do y'all just hang out with female friends and not like do nothing? Right. Or these are just people that you cool with. That's a whole different story. Right. No, no, and like I said, in my case is even recently, like even much like super recently, I like we would hang out. Go to like places like main event or something, go out to eat, and nothing really happens after that. You know what I'm saying? We just literally just hang out and that's it. You know what I'm saying? So um I think I'm just at that age now where I mean, I think I think it's just me being at the age I am now. I mean, not, I ain't, you know, I'm only, I'm only 33, but still, it's like I, I think I just don't have that I don't have that 
feeling of having to go chase somebody or whatever, just because I don't feel like I'm even trying to get myself caught up in something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's how I think. So I'm, I said, I'm with you on that, Carlos. I'm not chasing. We got a nobody. comment here. We got a comment that says, "I'm just gonna say this: attraction changes the game." Never heard a man say, "Wow, she's beautiful." One day. I would love to be strictly her platonic. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact, though. That is a fact. I can't yeah, says, Anything is possible, but if there is attraction between one of or both parties, it becomes difficult and less likely that the friendship was always 100% platonic. That's facts. I like that because I That's think fair. I think I have a lot of female friends that are attractive, but do I have female friends that I am attracted to? No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta kinda turn that switch off to be like, okay, yeah, I can see, I can see how you know certain guys would like her, and yeah, she's pretty and all that stuff. But if I'm in a situation where I'd be like, man, like yeah, I can't allow that to happen. Well, me especially because you know, because I'm because I'm married. <laughs> but if I was single, I wouldn't want to be if it was a woman that I wanted and I was attracted to, I wouldn't want her to friend zone me. That's just hardwired in my head. But you know that's right. that's what we do. We get friend zone and then we wait. Like she'll change her mind one day. I'll just <laughs> wait right here. Break glass in case of emergency. It's just so you still yeah, maintain yeah, yeah, that yeah. cool. You maintain that yeah. cool, hoping one day she just make a bad decision. <laughs> and, yeah. and, I, and, with you. and when you're in a relationship, you always suspicious of those male friends because you know, especially if she's an attractive woman, you know. If she slip up and she go be vulnerable and want somebody to talk to that shoulder to cry on, mm. he gonna try something. We know that. <laughs> that's I mean, I mean, that's just what it is. Like we already know that. So, um, like yeah, but I do agree with y'all. Like you know, what I'm saying there's like even being a filmmaker and I've done music videos and all that stuff and gotten like you know met people here and there and all that stuff. Yeah, it's, I mean, come on, we all seen attractive women all day. And even trying to move them that I'm cool with, but again, uh, I think it's just if we just if you kind of built that certain level with them or whatever, and you already know what it is from this point. I mean, if the intentions are there, if it's well known, then you know what it is what it is. But for the most part, for the most part, you know, like I said, I think just me being where I'm at now, I, I haven't been trying to go for nobody. So, but yeah, we already know what it is, man. I mean, you know, some guys just hot like to see an opportunity when they see a, a beautiful woman go from there. And others, you know, if in, in relationships, no, you kind of know the battery. So, absolutely. So, I'm, so I'm gonna say words, this. Uh, in other words, what you're saying is, friend, girl, that there's nothing between us, and we go. It's funny. That's how I found the spot that we shot our um, video at. Me and my homegirl was going there and chilling, and she's very attractive. But we go and we have wine and we talk, and she fuss and cuss at me. But I never said <laughs> nothing out of the way to her. You know what I'm saying? So it can't happen. And women do invite men out to drink. And um, so, but it, it was, it's she's single, I'm single, but we never thought about anything. We have a mutual friend. We never thought about anything together. We just go for peace of mind. She in her world and I'm in my world. Yeah. Um, so you can actually be friends contrary to what Steve said. Now, yeah. do I look at her sometime and go, yeah, you know. <laughs> she can get it. Yeah, she can get it. Okay, but so I ain't she trying to get door. like that. So oh, if she, she opened the door tight, if she opened the door, would you walk through it? Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I would leave my shoes at the door. Yeah. Hey, but no, man, I, th man. I think I, I say that all cavalier, but in all honesty, I probably wouldn't do it just because now we friends and I know it will mess up it will mess up the friendship. Because yeah. once you everybody know. Yeah. You lay in that bed, somebody gonna get up with feeling. Somebody roll out yeah. that bed with feelings. And if it ain't them, it's you. And it'll yeah. mess up a good friendship. And I it really they, they all they say they in control of their emotions, and I know I'm about to open up a floodgate. But uh once you once you stir that coffee, <laughs> we must got all dudes uh watching now because ain't these ladies ain't said nothing. <laughs> oh my god. Because yeah. to me, when you know, and, and on social media, you know, looking at comments and stuff, it was mostly the women that uh disagreed. And but you know a lot of men was like that's because y'all be the one friend zoning these dudes. <laughs> you don't give a damn how you feel about it. <laughs> you think he's your friend until, like you say, you open that door and, and see what happens. Especially if the especially if the guy's single. Like I can see if you have a platonic friend that's been married for a while, he's in a relationship for a while. 
okay, all right, I, I can give you that. But even then, that might be kind of like, because like, okay, let's, let's, let me ask you all the question. Let's look at it a different way. What do two attractive people, male or female, what do y'all have in common? Like, do you really want to hear her talk about her relationships? Are y'all talking about shopping? Does she care about sports or movies? Like, what do y'all have in common that y'all talking about? And it's you know what what is it what is it? I w- I would say this, Any, anybody. Man. I was I would say <laughs> that, and I agree with you. So that leads to this point. What about people that work together? So your common your commonality is the job. Y'all talking about stuff at the job all day long. Y'all go to meetings together. Y'all go on lunches together. Those are people that have things in common. So that's but, why. But does that mean going at work? But does that mean y'all friends or y'all just friendly coworkers or friendly, friendly acquaintances? Mm. Yeah. But that's yeah. your common that's your common ground. You know what I'm saying? You got that's what you got to define that friendship thing. Like I got friends, like I got female friends, like I went to high school with, you know, stuff like that. But like friends that I with female friends that I've met like like through business and stuff like that, they not calling me. We don't call each other like that. Hey, you wanna go kick it and all that? You know what I'm saying? It's just like right. people you just people you cool with. But if you networking, you might hang out if you network. What's going on, Angela Curry? What's going on? <laughs> Angela, what's going on? Wait, weigh in, weigh in on this, Angela. Weigh in on this. Are you are you do you have platonic male friends? Do you think they want to secretly smash? Let us know. <laughs> yes, they do. I'm gonna answer for her. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> oh that oh, see time, you must be a friend. Wait, but look, wait, wait, wait. For, for real though, honestly though, on, on, on all honesty though, like, like if you really legitimately think about it though, it's like, all right, so it's it's two things that can happen when you meet a female for the first time. It's two things that can actually happen. So one, um, you know, we look at we look at a female and we think, now, all right, you know, what I'm saying she's beautiful. You know, what I'm saying someone we think about smashing or whatever, cool, cool. Um, and, and and I have conversations with my homies about this all the time. You know, what I'm saying I got homies telling me, hey, dog. Yo, this lady look cute. I'm about to get a number and all that. You know what I'm saying? The typical, the typical stuff that you hear from a guy. Yeah. And then next thing you know, you hear about them smashing the female. I'm like, all right, bro, you got it, bro. You know what I'm saying? And then, it, but see, it's either that, it's either 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 that, or you just literally just want to be a friend. And but yeah. when when does that really happen though? When you just want to be a friend with somebody, a new female or whatever, blah blah blah. Most of the female friends I have are pretty much from high school. You know what I'm saying? And so forth. So a lot of as far as like anything through the movie project, it's very rare for me or through my yeah. old jobs or whatever. But that's pretty much been it. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's either one. Can men and women really be friends? What's she saying? Essex? Angela says, I do have male friends. I just feel more comfortable around men since all of my cousins are male. I hear that a lot from women, too. A lot of women, don't, you know, they don't spend a whole lot of time with, with women. They, they like being around men. J Dub says the crazy part is a lot of people who disagree with Steve have slept with people who they call friends. So how are you disagree? Mm. <laughs> friends sleep with each other on a daily basis. Yeah, that is true though. It happens. It is true. In quotation at that too. That's actually that's true. Yeah. So yeah. You rather, There's you always that line. Some friend right? than oh. some stranger. <laughs> What'd you say? Say it again. You rather smash a friend than some not you, but you think guys would rather smash a friend than a stranger than than some strange. Oh man, that's a good question. Uh, personally, me probably a stranger, because friendships are important to me, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you all right, think about, it. think about it. No, like, think about it like this, though. Like, see, let's just say, all right, like I actually care about the actual friendship. Like, we actually have been there for each other on the friendship level. You don't yeah. want to ruin that. You don't want to mess that up because the moment something smash, mother, if anything going to slip into that smash zone or whatever, that's what I'm gonna call it, the smash zone. If it slips into that plateau. Then yeah, like you said earlier, feelings can get involved and, and things can get weird and awkward, and then just it can turn into a you know what I'm saying the frame of benefits. And that's another thing that people call it. So that it can turn into that, and then things go sour. You already know it's gonna it's gonna go down here from you. Yeah. So you, you really want to chance that? You really want to chance that versus just someone that you just catch up with or whatever out of out of nowhere, blah blah blah. But yeah, I mean that's just how I see it. I I, I probably would rather go for a stranger versus a friend. That's just how I see it. And you said, so you guys are saying males and females can't truly be platonic. 
I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Yeah, yes, they, they can. can I, I think the, I think the answer is yes, they can, Angela. It just depends on where if there is attraction. A lot of times there's somebody's got some underlying attraction. If they keep it to themselves, that's different. But if somebody, as soon as somebody puts out there that they have an attraction or that they would, I think now you're in a situation where anything could happen in that. You know what I mean? So if if you if, if you're not attracted to that person and they're not attracted to you. Then yeah, you can be platonic, but if that attraction word is anywhere in the vicinity, anything mm. could be compromised. <laughs> right. Uh, or they say, you know or they say those, or somebody say those lines or whatever. Oh well, if I was, you know, if I was trying to date somebody, you would be the, you would be a good guy for the dude. Wait, no, no, I don't want to hear that. No, <laughs> no. The moment you hear that, that just opens the floodgates all day. J Dub uh, says. Angela, it is possible we can't we can't ignore biology and nature. If we are attracted to women, our first initial goal is not friendship. I got to co-sign that. Um, unless you just you know, yeah, like, cause then cause then like I say, what what are we being friends for? Especially if you're in a relationship. So if you're in a relationship, there's absolutely no reason for you to be making new female friends. Like it just doesn't. Exactly. Like networking exactly. is different. Like that's that's business. That's colleague yeah, stuff. Yeah. That's you know, making relation. That's relationship building. That's not friendship. But friendship, as far as we don't have anything to offer each other, and we just gonna talk, talk and text and all that. Nah, we ain't doing all that. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. Well, we are gonna you pray for the people who think they got friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I mean, you can't you can't ignore attraction at all. You just can't ignore. It. You can't help how you right. see somebody or feel about somebody. You just can't help that. You know what I'm saying? You see somebody attracted. That's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I think nowadays, I think like I said, like most of the female friends that I actually have a good friendship with is from high school. So anyone else that's like in between high school and now, it's very few in between those parts because at this point. You know, you kind of you 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 still gonna see attractive women all day, and even when I'm out filming or whatever, it's like it's a, I mean it's a different story even with filming or whatever. But you know, it's just it, it's it's a hit or miss. It's a really it's a really big hit or miss when it comes to that. So, are we really trying to go for a friendship? We single, cool. Relationship, married. I wouldn't even I would like if I was in a relationship or married or something like that. I wouldn't even try to get new friends with friends either. It's no point. I, at this point, you kind of like cross. Uh, for the ladies out there, I want to say this. And um, you put a guy in the friend zone, ladies, and now you're making him wait. So now he's getting to know you. He's getting to know your habits. He's getting to know the things that you like. You made him wait so long. That's still some attraction. So now it's a it's a goal. Now you done made me wait two months. Now I got to stay around. I got to I gotta stay <laughs> around now and hope you let your guard down because I done spent two months waiting yeah. on you. So <laughs> I just want to say that. What's up, Dean? What's going on, Dean? This is one of uh, the stars of your film, Carlos. Yes, sir. There you go. Oh, name is Dean. Yeah. Sometimes the friendship is more important and not worth risking. I got you. Oh, man. Oh, Ivan. Oh. Great show, man. Um, Carlos, man, tell the people again where they can find you on social media, where they can find your films and uh, all that good stuff. OK, for sure. So um, you can follow me on Instagram at Cast Two Films as uh, C-A-S, the number two in films with an S. Uh, Facebook is um, LOS2K6. Um, so uh, Facebook.com slash LOS2K6. So that's where you can um, find it. Same thing with YouTube. It's LOS2K6. So, you know, you follow me on those pages so you can get more information about casting call because a lot of people have been asking me about that. So make sure to follow me on those pages. Um, you can see my latest film, Luke and Lee, on Amazon Prime right now. Um, just type in Luke and Lee, you'll find it. Um, I do have a few other films that's on digital platforms, which I can, you know, share on my platforms as well. But um, that's pretty much it. That's good. That's what's up, man? Hey, this is a great show. conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations on all your success. Uh, we're going to have you on again next time you uh, if you know you want to promote something or you want to talk about just the process and uh, get these clips out here. We appreciate you. 
uh, for supporting us, and uh, we're going to continue to support you. And uh, we appreciate you coming on, brother. Thanks for your time. Hey, man, appreciate y'all fellas, man. Definitely looking forward to next time. Yes. Absolutely. Hey, man, it's been a great Absolutely. show. Absolutely. Thanks, on, brother. On. All right, yeah, fellas, I'm out. <laughs> Yeah. I'm your man, comedian, uh, Tight Mike, and Tight Mike Comedy on all your social media. Uh, this is my man, Essex O'Brien. We're keeping you in our beds, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Y'all got me on uh, Essex O'Brien on Facebook. Oh, my bad. <laughs> my bad. We having a little technical difficulty. I was right on top of you there. But yeah, Essex O'Brien on uh, Facebook, at, yeah, at Actor Man Essex on Instagram. Uh, we're going to see you um, next week is Mother's Day. So we're going to have a nice little uh, Mother's Day show. You know what I mean? A little surprise from you. And uh, again, check out Painkiller. It's coming out on May 4th. Let me put this up real quick. Come on, picture. Come on. There we go. There it's working now. <laughs> Painkillers coming out May 4th on Amazon Prime and on DVD sales at your Walmarts and Targets and all that good business. And uh, what you got coming up, Tight? Hey, man. So much coming up, brother. Uh, this weekend, we'll be with the Kappas doing a virtual comedy show, raising a little money with the Kappas out of uh, Bradenton, Florida, Sarasota area down there. Uh, May the 8th, Tallahassee. Uh, May 15th, look out for me. Coming to do a big comedy show uh, at the Car Museum, May 15th. May 22nd, we with the Deltas over in Daytona Beach. We got a virtual fundraiser going. That's the 22nd. And then the 29th, Memorial Day weekend, we'll be in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, my man, Twan, at the MAA Banquet Hall. Uh, you can check out my page, Type Mike Comedy, for all my social media. Find out when I'm going to be in a city near you or in your city. Hey, love y'all, man. That's what's up. Y'all take care. What's up? Tell the tell the Hey, for everybody that family. joined us and was rocking with us in the comments, Oh, yeah, Shout absolutely, man. Family. We appreciate Thank all you. your uh, prayers and thoughts. Yeah, we appreciate all your thoughts and prayers and everybody. Thank you for rocking with us in the comments, all the uh, people that joined. We appreciate you. We're going to see you next week. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but uh, it is what it is. We appreciate it. We'll see you.